Now this is called the, uh, this is actually found uh, called the Fisher effect and uh, the change in expected rate of inflation will be, will basically cause the appropriate increase, decrease the changes in interest rate in the country. So for the United States, the feature effects may be written like this. So one plus, now this I is nominal interest rate. So this is nominal, it goes to one plus rho, which is, this is the real interest rate. Real interest rate is simply change in purchasing power, right? And times expected one plus inflation, pi is the inflation. So rho is the real rate, pi is the inflation. So if you rewrite this, one plus real rate should be one plus nominal rate divided by expected one plus inflation. That's called Fisher effect, Fisher effect. And that's the exact Fisher effect. So internationally, let's look at again. So if Fisher effect holds in the United States, we have this formula as previously. If the Fisher effect in Japan hold, then one plus interest nominal yen equals to one plus real interest yen plus a times expected one plus inflation of yen, right? Power purchase parity says that the real rate should be the same, right? If the real rate should be, if it is the same, then what happened is you can actually just uh, cancel this and then one plus I interest rate of yen divided by one plus interest rate, nominal interest rate dollar is simply the, the expected one plus inflation of Japan divided by one plus United States inflation. So that's international Fisher effect. So if it is hold and the ILP holds now, right? Then what happened is you can calculate the forward rate. The forward rate divided by spot rate should be simply expected one plus inflation of Japan divided by expected one plus inflation in the United States. So again, this is another equilibrium. If you include inflation again, we know that, uh, well, this is the exact one. So the previous one is, is approximate one, right? So it's the differences. And the exact one is tells us that now, this relation is exact because we use the exact formula. So this PPP actually tells us a little interesting story. So this is the GDP at market exchange rate, because at market exchange rate, uh, basically GDP is measured by US dollars. So the, the left hand side is GDP at market exchange rate. Number one, US, China, Japan, Germany, UK, France, Brazil, Italy, India, Russia, Canada, Australia, Korea, Spain, Mexico. That's basically the, the biggest, how many countries? One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen countries, right? Now, if you use the PPP exchange rate, PPP means now you we include the power purchase measure exchange rate and then recalculate the GDP, then China become number one, first of all. Because Chinese price level is lower. So it actually measure the real purchasing power basis. The United States is second, and India is now third. Huge rise, right? Nine to third, three. Japan is fourth, because the Indian price level is quite low. Again, Germany, Russia, Brazil, France, UK, Mexico, Italy, Korea, 
Canada, Spain, Australia. So, you know, if you look at, say, Australia, it down because of the price level is high. And then, like UK, UK is five to nine because of the price level of the UK is pretty high. And it may be actually uh, also another example, another uh, possibility that say British pound is pretty overvalued secure uh, currency, which is widely uh, common, commonly uh, perceived, right? Why market believe that the UK currency is a little, uh, kind, kind of common overvalued uh, currency. So that's why the, if you use the market exchange rate, it's just number five in GDP, but it dropped to nine if you use the purchasing uh, power parity change rate. 